welcome to Alpha Militaria TV. Thank you very much for tuning in once again. My name is Richard Saunders. Now, when it comes to iconic gun brands, many of us think of names like Smith & Wesson, Remington, Colt, maybe Kalashnikov. But in terms of British brands, they don't come much bigger and more iconic than Lee Enfield. Now, Lee Enfield rifles will, for, will forever be associated with the world wars, when the 303 in particular was churned out by the absolute million. Uh, and since then, unfortunately, the name has largely been consigned to the history books. But there is still a company, Lee Enfield Guns Limited, that produces mainly replica rifles and pistols that use CO2 and BBs. Um, but they have also launched a full-on PCP air rifle, uh, which is this, the Lee Enfield Sentry. Now, we've been reviewing a few uh, more affordable rifles just recently, and this very definitely falls into that category. Um, it's marketed and distributed in the UK by uh, the Shooting Party, and they will sell you one for £399. Now, what we're going to do is, as usual, we're going to run through the rifle from back to front, zoom in on a few of the key features, then put a target down range and see how it shoots. Now, the, the Lee Enfield Sentry has a unique aesthetic, it has to be said, and I think it's a real Marmite gun. People will either love it to bits or they'll not be quite so keen. I have to say, to start with, I was a little bit kind of, oh, what's that? But it's really, really grown on, on me. As it's been um, knocking about my gun cabinet and I've been using it for the last few weeks, I've really got to like this styling. Uh, now at the back, it has a solid rubber butt pad. Um, that does not adjust in any way. But the cheek piece, which is a, um, a sort of a rubberized polymer finish, um, has a couple of uh, little thumb screws down here that you can uh, that you can slacken off to raise this cheek piece up and down it gives you really good um, eye alignment and the fact that there are uh, two um, thumb wheels just here means that when that cheek piece is in the raised position it's really quite solid which is nice now the front or the back half of the stock is this beech uh, beech wood um, and it's stained, but I have to say it's very good quality, very smooth, it's quite slender in actual fact. You know, you're looking at sort of, I don't know, just over an inch of depth just here and a little bit more further up the, the, the stock. Uh, the pistol grip is, uh, is not uh, checkered, there's no checkering on the rifle, but there are um, uh, contours for your fingers. And I should say the rifle from a stock perspective is completely ambidextrous. Uh, the cutout isn't the biggest cutout in the world, but it's plenty big enough for my hand and I'm sure most people's hands as well. And that sets you up to use uh, the trigger. Now, the blade is, uh, is a metal blade, which is nice, nicely curved as well. Two-stage trigger. There's no obvious means of adjusting it. There's certainly no external adjustment on the trigger. But um, I found the let-off to be pretty good, actually. The, the first stage is quite short, the second stage is a bit longer. Uh, the tiniest little bit of creep on the second stage, but it breaks nice and cleanly as well, and you get used to it very, very quickly. The uh, trigger guard itself is, um, is a plastic, and mounted right at the top of the trigger guard, just up here, is the safety catch, which you, and normally safety catches, you slide them forward um, to shoot. Uh, with this one, you pull it back um, to shoot. You slide it forward to make the gun safe, pull it back uh, to shoot, which is um, a little bit different. It's, it's not, an, not an automatic safety catch. Um, it's completely manual and resettable as well. Now, on top of that, you have a, a dovetail scope rail. It's split in two either side of the, the breech for the magazine here. Um, and on the right side, you have this very short uh, uh, sight, um, bolt action and the travel is only about I should think probably an inch maybe a little bit more than an inch you pull it up and back to cock the rifle and then forward and down to return the bolt and it does require quite a firm tug to bring it back to make sure that you've cocked the action uh, doing that will cycle a pellet through the magazine now the magazine is uh, eight shots in 2.2 nine shots in 177 and it enters the, the rifle, the breech, from the left-hand side of the gun. Um, and it's nice and straightforward. And we'll show you the magazine in a little bit more detail in a little while. Now, forward of that, you have this um, ballistic polymer cage, fore-end. 
So the wooden stock kind of ends about here, and then you have this plastic cage that has these slots in it uh, that takes over. It's very, very solid. There's no creak or flex in it whatsoever. It's really good quality, and it does give you really good grip on the rifle, I have to say. And it does give you that unique um, look to the rifle. Now, the um, I should say the rifle overall weighs about three and a half kilos, so it's a full full sort of size rifle, just over a meter long. The barrel is 430 millimeters long, and it has these three uh, molded Picatinny rails that are part of this ballistic polymer part of the, of the stock. Now, why you would have Picatinny rails right on top of the barrel, sort of you know, in front of the scope, I don't really know. Uh, perhaps you fix a bayonet to it or something. Um, but underneath of more use to you is the fact that you have a Picatinny rail, accessory rail underneath here that you can use uh, for uh, a bipod, a uh, sling swivel, that kind of thing. And then if you notice here, where are we? Just here, there are a couple of um, brass threads either side of the end of the forend. And you will get, in, in, as part of your pack, you'll receive a couple of additional Picatinny rails that you can screw in uh, to the side of the uh, the forend, which are probably going to be more useful for things like torches uh, and what have you. The um, end of the rifle has, the muzzle has a plastic uh, silencer, which does a reasonable job of reducing the muzzle crack, um, but you can remove it and you can fit a uh, uh, an aftermarket silencer directly to uh, the shroud, because the shroud has a half inch UNF thread. If you prefer, this whole um, uh, shroud comes off to reveal just the naked barrel, and the barrel as well has a half inch UNF thread. So you can screw a silencer directly onto the naked barrel if you want that, that kind of more slimline uh, look. Now the, um, the air cylinder takes a 200 bar fill and that's enough to give you about 100 shots in 177, around about 120 shots in 2.2. And filling it is nice and easy. You've got a, a collar at the top of the, of the cylinder here, which you rotate to reveal the, uh, the fill port. It's a little bit loose, it kind of spins round um, a little bit. Um, so just keep an eye on that. You, know, you don't want that, that fill port to be exposed um, to, uh, to let any dirt or anything get inside it. And then right at the very, very end there, see that there is a uh, pressure gauge to tell you what your overall pressure is. Now, as I said, this rifle is fully regulated, um, which is a great feature to have, especially on a, a 399 pound rifle, but there's no second uh, gauge to tell you what the regulator pressure is. So I think that's all the main features. Let's zoom in, zoom in on a few of those and show them to you in more detail. Well, there's nothing unique about uh, filling up the uh, the air on the sentry. As part of your pack, you'll get one of these little fill probes that just snaps into directly into one of these quick fit adapters. Then, as I said before, you want to rotate this, this collar at the top of the air cylinder until you reveal the fill port itself. Then you put the probe in and then you fill up with air from your air supply. Now, I'm not gonna fill this one up because it's already got a full charge but it really is as simple as that. You get two magazines with the Lee Enfield Sentry. 
uh, and you also get a single shot loader as well. And the magazine is very simple, it's quite small. Uh, it consists of a plastic faceplate, which doesn't move, and then inside it, there is a, a separate uh, rotating drum, uh, which is sprung. So to fill up, um, you can see there's a little hole at the top here. Simply place your pellet in, rotate that drum, just hold it against the, uh, the spring with your finger, put in another pellet, rotate it round again, uh, and it rotates round um, anti-clockwise, I should say. Oops, there we go. Now the 2.2 two takes, one, uh, takes uh, eight shots and the 177 takes uh, nine. And just keep going till you fill up all the chambers. And then once you've done that, obviously that spring is held uh, under tension by the pellets inside the, uh, inside the magazine and you're ready to insert it into the breech. Inserting the magazine into the sentry is nice and straightforward. First of all, what you want to make sure is that your rifle is on safe with the safety catch here. Push that forward to make it safe. Now the, the bolt is quite short, uh, so you want to kind of lift it up, pull it back quite firmly, only about an inch or so, it's a, quite a short throw. And then the magazine itself actually inserts into the, the breech from the left hand side. Now hopefully you can see on there that there's like a little sort of U-shape there around the uh, the hole. That has to line up with the uh, the breech inside here. So it's simply a case of locating the magazine in that breech, pushing it through until it won't go any further, and then returning your bot by pushing it forward and down, and then you're ready to go. Target as ever is set out at 30 meters. Now I'm using Air Arms Diablo field pellets uh, in 2.2 caliber, they're the 5.52 size. So let's see how we get on. Target blew up at the very worst moment there. Right, well, let's go and see how that looks um, on the target. Not the best group in the world, I have to say. Well, I mean, it is so windy down here, it's untrue. But that's probably maybe just over an inch. Um, I say the conditions aren't really doing any favours here. What I would say is also that I haven't had the benefit of pellet testing different pellets in this rifle either. Um, but that's not too bad, you know, bearing in mind this is a, an affordable rifle and it's full power as well. So there you have it, that is the Lee Enfield Sentry. Um, very much a, an entry level uh, PCP rifle. I've seen these on sale for about 350 quid, so very affordable. Absolutely full power as well. Um, this is running at sort of 11, well, 11.5, six foot pounds, something like that on average. Uh, not a bad spread, about 14 feet per second over a 10 shot spread as well. So, you know, that's not to be sniffed at. Accuracy wasn't great, has to be said. I think a lot of that has to do with the, uh, the gale force conditions uh, today. And also the fact that, you know, I haven't done any pellet testing with this rifle at all. And I'm sure that better conditions, the opportunity to try different pellets through it would tighten up that group as well. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please hit the like button, give us a subscribe because it does help us out. 
And if you'd like to uh, see a whole bunch of other air gunning topics, take a look at our website, which is www.alphamilitaria.com. Thanks for watching.